What I want to do here is essentially talk to you which classes you should be going for if you press for time. I want to give a brief description of each one. And then as we're going along, I'm going to be kind of ranking about like how fast are you able to make that character? Also leveling up the leveling up process each thing what time you level up your character. And then you know, how like time consuming it is. So it goes from fast. Okay. Amount of time. Maybe you got to do a little research till like this is taking forever <laughs> especially if you're a new player okay and even even some veteran players when it comes to certain classes that take a longer amount of time it just does it takes it doesn't take like one hour it takes a couple hours but cool so when it comes to classes there's generally three types of classes you can think of uh, you have your your melee classes you have your half casters okay so melee are, i think more self-explanatory they can hit with weapons you can throw knives uh, spears maybe they have a shield and mainly rely on their physical abilities than some sort of magic okay where half caster is going to have a combination of the of both so half caster is going to have of some magic and it's going to have some you know be able to use weapons or machinery and then you can have spell casters which some of them can be really good with physical like you know weapons and whatnot but mainly they're relying on their magical abilities which might be more arcane or divine in nature and just just so you know uh this class is considered a spell caster but uh, i'll explain why i have him as a half caster later on okay so in general a melee class is going to be a lot less time consuming so it's going to be faster to make a character those classes are barbarians fighters rogues monks and then this is the extra class uh not technically official but it's really popular it's called blood hunter um, and we're going to talk about each one our health casters take a little more time okay and the reason why i say mel the melee ones are a little bit better as far as learning the game as far as time amount of time that you need to put in is because it's pretty straightforward you can read and understand okay this is what my character does when it comes to D D, anytime all of a sudden you start adding magic elements to it you have to do a little research on the spells because you want to understand what your magic abilities do so that's where the half casters fall in they're a mix of the melee but they do have some spell elements just the full uh, spell casters but it's a lot more restricted literally think half as an example most spell casters can go all the way to level nine spells and half casters only go up to five so literally there are half casters you are adding that magic element to it they take longer than a melee class okay so these classes here are artificer ranger paladin and then again warlock is a a full spellcaster just so you know it is a full spellcaster but the, lately they've been playing around with it the developers the DD developers have been playing around with it um and it plays more like a half caster even though you can have level nine spells with a warlock like these other spell casters the you don't get as many spell slots right now um and they're playing with it and they're actually in the last play test they actually even made it into a spell cast like half caster excuse me so i'm kind of putting it in there because most of the play style kind of falls within this this range okay and then lastly and again this is the short version of things you don't call it a day okay spell casters they take the longest to create a lot of times when choosing your your class because you have to read into each of the spells right so you got cleric bard druid sorcerer and wizard and they just take a little bit more time okay but this that's just the general but what i want to do is literally go into each class describe each class a little bit more and then even go a little bit more in depth because regardless of what your motivation is for each character you can really choose what sounds best for you especially when you're a new player okay the barbarians here first we're going to start with barbarian okay so this is a barbarian the barbarians they're tough they are going to be more of your offensive type characters they're going to do damage right they're the type that you're going to run into a battle and really start doing the damage really at the end of the day um they are considered also tanks so the barbarian gets the highest amount of hit points in the game so they can take on the damage so if you want to play that defender type of role where you want to protect the party like really run in keep the enemy busy while you're while the other party members are running around and trying to find other ways to defeat the enemy then this could be a good choice for you and what i was going to mention here is kind of go through some criteria really really quick they're they're pretty offensive like i was saying they can tank they're pretty simple to get a hang of they have a, a thing called rage with the ups their damage i'm not going to go super in depth into, into everything but here's some of the uh the subclasses that you have so ancestral garden kind of a little more nature wise battle rager literally have like this spiked armor we got berserker which just has been uh, updated in the new play test that that does uh really well got totem warrior which makes you really tanky depending on what if you pick the bear or not and there's other fun animal stuff see a lot that helps you like revive right so overall i'll say barbarian is really simple to to role play um you can 
literally a lot of times you hear the like the dumb barbarian type type character but you can really play any sort of barbarian you can play Co as a kona in the barbarian right and uh this is a wild beast barbarian and whatnot okay so i would say at the end of the day the barbarian i'll put it in, in fast no matter what from beginning to end right from level one to level 20 you don't take too much time getting your character up to speed and like and, and make sure your character's ready to go for that next game session and i think there's uh a lot of flexibility there. Okay. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's keep going here. So next one, we got fighter. Boom, we landed right on there. Okay. So fighter, a little bit different than the barbarian. The barbarians can, uh, will shields, right? You see a lot of fighters here with shields, but they're more expert class on different weapons. So you're going to see a lot more weapon variety with these guys. So it's like you got halbergs and um, they're typically more trained and there's a lot of different flavors that you can get from them. There's a lot of opportunity to role play a character here. I would say that they're pretty straightforward as well. There are some subclasses that get a little, maybe, maybe a little overwhelming for, for a beginner thinking of the battle master, battle master, uh, which gives you a lot of different options that you can do for your character and it, there's a long list of stuff so you're like oh now all of a sudden you're reading a bunch but once you can kind of know them you're fine and there's a lot of different types of fighters you can play as a samurai is a, a fighter you have like a psychic warrior you have a eldritch knight that does allow you to use magic right so a lot of these you can use magic but yeah but fighters are typically just like the barbarians more uh, more on the offensive right they are that tank they don't get as many hit points as the uh barbarians but at the same time their armor is making up for it maybe they're sometimes a little harder to hit it all depends how you how you do that and, and as far as role play going goes um you have a lot of variety if you want to be that quiet samurai or, or charismatic uh, talk, type of talker with um what what's the name of the subclass i think purple dragon knight is what i'm thinking or baronet they call that one but they call this one the purple dragon knight you can be even kind of like echo knight kind of makes shadows right so you can maybe even be not assassin necessarily but a little more sneaky um with them so going over here to this chart i'll say as far as leveling up your character the fighter is pretty straightforward you're not going to have too many complications from level to level and as far as a beginner goes great class to start with next i'm going to do the rogue okay so the rogue let's find it so the rogue they're typically the known as the like the sneaky sneaky stabby stabby type person like think skyrim every single time you try to sneak uh you know where they could jeet you are a rogue essentially and um a lot of role playing flavor um uh, with them you know you have your typical like, like city rat type of thing kind of like aladdin or you can be an assassin or a thief so i'm thinking cat cat yeah cat woman from batman right that'd be considered a rogue of some sort and the cool thing about them is they they're more when it comes to being offensive they're about all about getting that damage you know they're they're about getting up there up there close and really um doing that damage so you can see here we got assassin we got mastermind uh phantom kind of gives them like some like psychic powers um squash bugger kind of make them a little more pirate thief um arc interester gives them again gives the rogue some magic they can play with so overall uh straight again straightforward again they're more on the uh, defensive side their hit points and aren't as big as the as the as the barbarian or fighter uh, but they do have some and they can be very helpful in s certain situations because they're kind of skill monkey they're able to unlock like lock doors see traps um a lot easier than others i say um and just overall great character to role play with you don't have to be this lonely edgy dude to play one you can be totally charismatic if you like um or you can be shy either way either way you're going to be a badass with this character with this class so as far as rogue goes a lot of times yeah i'm just i'm just ranking them by by speed i was going to move them up a little bit but Overall, they're fast. So this is a great class to pick with. Next one here, we got the monk. Oh, there we go. Cool. Bam. So monk, uh, the war, um, Asian inspired, uh, Dungeons and Dragons is working. The company is working on kind of changing that. They, they felt like they kind of locking too much into, um, to Jackie Chan or Bruce Lee, you know, just Shaolin monks type of style type of stuff that you might see from like Street Fighter or so. So they're really trying to expand on that. But overall, when it comes to the monk, you can do a lot of acrobatic type of stuff. So if you want to be like running up walls, doing flips, jumping into the action, and then jumping out, uh, similar to what Rogue would do, but just in a different style, um, then you definitely can. They're, they're a little bit more like the Rogue where you don't want to be in the combat. Like you're kind of, you're more standing your ground and, um, and you're punching, right? You can use some weapons, uh, but, but typically you're not trying to be that tank for your party, right? You're figuring out what other ways to help out. So when it comes to the monk in general, right? With all the different types of subclasses that, 
that they have, which they have many different types of subclasses. Um, overall, they're pretty quick class to get a hang of and read. Probably the hardest thing is understanding their monk weapon, where it talks about like, your weapon can be heavy. So, like, what's what's a heavy weapon? Then you know you kind of gotta look that up. But overall, in general, pretty straightforward. You don't have to deal with magic too much in any sense. And generally, all these four are about the same there. Okay. As far as melee goes, the last one here in a melee is the blood hunter. There we go. Okay. So for those who don't know who the blood hunter is, essentially they essentially can turn themselves into monsters to fight other monsters. That's the problem. One, one way to put it. And again, this is an uh, not official D D class, but uh, was made by um Matthew Mercer and was really popular that a lot of people do play it. So I'm just I just adding it in here. Um but essentially you can you're using blood magic instead of re regular magic. So the theme a lot for these guys is kind of dark and edgy and you can become you can become like a lichen or um get help from like a patron. I think they have a mutant subclass, but it's not necessarily becoming a mutant. Here it is. Yeah. So you, so so the subclasses here is ghost slayer, lichen, mutant, and uh profan soul. Which this is the one that you can, you can work with uh uh, what the with the demon if you want all that stuff kind of like a war warlock once we get to that but again they're a little more melee focused even though um, it is blood magic but a lot of times it's pretty straightforward it's not it's like everything's kind of laid out for you and you don't have to overthink things i say the blood hunter has a lot of great uh role playing opportunities especially if you like that dark and dark uh type of things a lot of if you want to be gruesome talk about blood um you know go for it but i think there's a lot of great opportunity there so i feel like overall this is it, it's, it's kind of okay but it really it's more on the fast side i think that you don't end up spending more too much time so i feel i feel like these guys are almost kind of in order if you want the fat the simplest to the least simplest in the fast category i would say just like that okay let's go to the half casters yeah we'll start with artificer here let me show some pictures over here so artificers think of um what, what's the word steampunk a lot of people call them the like steampunk people but essentially in D, D, they are inventors right they they create gadgets to aid themselves in, in, in daily lives but some like this dude right here has created like a mechanical companion so like a, a, like a dog they can't wield some weapons um but again their 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 role isn't to be up in front i forget their actual hit die i want to say it's a d8 i think it's probably a d8 oh i passed it where is it passed it yeah d8 okay so d8 was right here um so they don't have they have they have a normal amount of health right and their and their magic is not like magic it's more like they invented the magic so instead of sending a a fireball or something it's more of a of a container that when thrown it, it, it erupts fire right kind of like a bomb essentially so artificer has has some cool you know elements there but again since they're a half caster they're, they're more folk more focused on say a little bit more on support they can do attack and they can tank especially if you pick their armor uh subclass which allows you to change to change pretty much your body into like a robot suit um but at the same time, it just depends on what you're picking. Alchemist is a little bit more support and focusing more on your, on your ability to create items and um, do doing your magic. Battlesmith, this is the one that allows you to create your companion, right? It can be like a dog. It can be like a little like owl thing, if I remember correctly, a little flying thing. And so it gives you some flexibility. Just how like so, I think that's the thing about half casters. They have a lot of flexibility in them. And when so when it comes to the artificer, I would say because. At the beginning, I feel like there's a lot of things that kind of get thrown at you. That, that I think they require a little bit more, a little bit more research than normal. Um, I think when we're in a, like first level, you do have to pick out a couple of spells, so you got to take a little more time. And as you're leveling up, you might want to plan out a few things. So I would say, as far as time goes, it will take a little bit more than some of the other classes. Uh, for those uh, anyone just joining, this is uh, how much time it would actually take you, if, especially if you're a new player, because you want to be considering your job, your work, your family, and then actually. The time to create your character from the initial the first time you create it to every single time you're leveling up um cool let's go with the ranger next everybody always thinks of not legolas but the other guy from <laughs> from lord of the rings uh the shadow dude i can't remember his name but um ergon ergon right um so everybody always thinks of him because it's like bow and arrow but they're both legolas and ergon of good examples of, of a ranger but the thing about rangers is they're more focused on um distance fighting but they they level up similar to a fighter would the only difference is you're focusing a little bit more on being able to like track uh certain monsters at times they're trying to bring that flavor that role play back to, into the character class a little bit more they are focused a little bit more on distance fighting so they're using those bows crossbows but you can have a ranger 
who has double weapons and they're trying to make that easier and there's a character that's famous in DD called driz and he is the ranger has a pet panther i believe and and fights with like here it is this is the dude right here right there um and fights with that two double swords so there are different types of rangers you can play with it doesn't have to just be the bow and arrow but that's typically the ones they play Again, they're not about being up in the front. They're more about being more in the distance, supporting. They have magic that can trap uh, your enemies, so you can just rain down fire on them. So they have Beastmaster, which allows you to have a, a, a companion, like like a panther, a, a sample, or a dog, or a cat, however you want to do. Gloomstalker, kind of like an assassin. Horizon Walker is kind of cool. You can have like bees to distract or butterflies. Uh, Hunter, like or monster slayer. Oh, no, sorry, the bees one, Stormkeeper. Oh, right. This one's more, um, tell you can teleport around. I want to play one of those. Sounds pretty cool. And then Drake Warden, you can, like, I think you're flying on a dragon, like a, like a Drake. So they're pretty cool. Rico, you, you wrote, Rangers do bushcraft. They're bushmen. Yes. So you can literally sit on top of a tree, wait for your, wait for your enemy, um, and snipe them, right? You can, you can be that sniper type type role but overall going back to this list here i would say because because the ranger kind of if it follows a pretty straightforward type of fighter vibe the only thing that you're that you're doing is like picking out like one or two spells here and there that overall as far as time consumption goes when you're when you first create an arranger and you are leveling them up afterwards, I would say this falls into the okay. Like it's pretty straightforward. You can read the spells. Yeah, being overwhelmed with choices. I think that's the biggest thing. Next here we have is the paladin. Okay. So let me find that paladin tab. Boom. Okay. So the paladin, notice that, notice that they look a lot like fighters, essentially, right? But uh, where fighters can be more acrobatics, right? A fighter can still wield a bow, can, could wear light armor like a rogue. Um, paladins, a lot of times, they are, they are focused on more heavy armor. They're essentially uh, binded by either a social contract or even a godly one. So essentially, when it comes to when it comes to paladins, they can also be a tank. They can be offensive type characters and they have a good amount of health, just like a fighter would. The only difference is where a fighter can attack multiple times and almost use no magic. The paladin does have, they can do some basic attacking, um, and they have great, great shielding and be able to cast magic where, where their magic is a little bit more focused on, uh, healing in, in emergencies, but also, uh, manu maneuvering around. So they got, their their spell great steed or finding great steed where they can like summon essentially like a horse or even like a unicorn later on at higher levels and you can like literally fly on your uh, unicorn but i believe you gotta make sure your dm is okay with that but essentially you the biggest thing when it comes to their spells is smite which allows you to use a sp your spell to do extra damage so they are dealing damage so here's divine smite right there okay that's what it's called and it adds a 1d8 for each spell level that you do it and they're kind of messing with it a little bit right now but in general it seems like they're, sh they're keeping smite that's the kind of thing about it and i say the only thing when it comes about the paladin role playing i say the first time I, I heard of paladin i was kind of scared to try it because there seems to be like a big role playing aspect of of the class like if you pick one you have to play a certain way and my advice for you as a beginner is don't worry about it don't feel like so much obligated to like role play them to the t just have fun right again similar to i believe similar to the ranger the paladin is pretty close to that fighter all the, all they're really doing is throwing in a couple extra uh, abilities that allows them to use uh, divine magic in a different way and and they just get a couple of spells here and there just like the ranger and i think they're okay so just so you know oak okay, from fast to okay it is gonna be a big time difference um so anytime you start putting in you start putting in spells it just it just takes a little bit more time so imagine if if these fast characters just took you an hour to create okay would be like you know say two hours maybe like that maybe i should do that like one hour this is two hours right just to kind of give a reference, right? Not, not that it actually would take you an hour or so. This is just to give you a reference. Like this is going to take you more to just to create your character or to level them up. Cause sometimes that, that happens. <laughs> but I'm not, not going to lie. Sometimes I'm playing and, um, well, I was playing a cleric one time and then it took me a while just to level them up. Um, that's just a, a nice little reference. Okay. Not, not this exact. Okay. So now we're kind of getting into the spellcasters. I put the warlock here because they are, they play a little bit more like half casters. Getting, getting into them. So warlocks, uh, for those who don't know, you essentially can make a, a pact with a patron and all your patrons can be a demon. It can be like a giant octopus. It can be, um, uh, like a raven queen. I'm trying to think. It could be a genie. 
so essentially these patrons give you your powers typically most of the time dark in nature right so similar to that blood hunter earlier that we we're talking about but when it comes to them they're more like unique magic users you know you can cast your spells but you're limited a lot so sometimes you have to find other ways to you're kind of doing utility it's kind of support as well i feel like you do some offensive capabilities you do support you can heal with certain classes in in the warlock and you can do some casting I, I wouldn't say that they're great at everything but the flavor is there if you enjoy it um just to kind of give you an idea each of these is, is an example of what type of patron you would be getting as a subclass but essentially art i don't remember arc fate right now but celestial obviously like more of a divine being foundless is that the giant octopus fiends like a demon genie great old one i think that's cthulhu run right Co correct me without if i'm wrong it's been a while hex blade pretty much you give your soul to a um a weapon that magical weapon undead and undying but yeah there, i feel that there is some complexity to the warlock and by the way i haven't like predetermined these ahead of time i'm doing this live with you guys so right now i feel they're kind of falling more on the, on the research tier because they have these things called invocations invocations that just that add to the character's complicity uh comp Plexit, okay, yeah, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. But also, their spell casting is just off. It's different than the other spell casters here. If you start with it, maybe you're okay. I think that's fine. Again, regardless of what I say here today, if I said warlock don't choose it if you want to play a warlock as your first character do it okay i tried to play a warlock like a lizard folk warlock uh for a little bit it was like kind of like a one-shot thing i enjoyed it even though it was like, like one or two sessions <laughs> so but i, I was confused <laughs> when i was making it did i do this right so it just it just takes a little bit more okay let's go to cleric here so cleric is an other divine spellcaster just like the paladin and they tend to be more on the religious uh, side of things but they don't have to be the cool thing about this one you can you can role play like you having a certain god or um some sort of entity that does help you typically a neutral not, not like evil in any way but uh, but maybe you could if you like i know they have weapons they can attack the thing about clerics they're kind of like a jack of all trades class like you can have a group of all clerics and and have a different type of cleric you can have one that's more offensive you have one that kind of tanks a little bit more you can have one that does uh really really good healing um you can do one that is just all about support they all have abilities to um to role play so the cleric is a great class as far as as a beginner goes mechanics it is a little tough how currently things are in the game uh, because in the first uh, first level you do pick your subclass for cleric which is going to add time as your first time now you got to pick between let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen different subclasses and this is your first time then you gotta like learn about each one of them so and they're all cool right but that's something that's going to add to your time especially for a first first time player to really understand what type of cleric you want to play and for me i always tried to play a like in your face i'm gonna attack cleric i know i was never the type of cleric player to go oh i'm gonna heal you i'm the one to like run up into the action which you can do to an certain extent in this um in this game but maybe not how you expect like in, like in like in a video game or something again you have to you're gonna have to pick from your spells right off the bat and you're picking a subclass those two things uh, when it comes to as far as time goes right um uh, being friendly the cleric is great a lot of times people they put them like in a higher tier like oh they're like an a tier or s tier for a beginner but as far as time consumption and you moving up at every single every single level i would say they fall into that that research right in the beginning right in the beginning later on i think maybe it goes into a little bit of the okay section so maybe i'll, I'll put them a little bit more there right where they can get to a point where they're pretty uh easy to work with but in the beginning you're gonna need some time but things are pretty straightforward a bard i'm trying to go through this quickly here for you guys first of all totally different than than a cleric but i feel that they fall under they fall similar to a cleric over here um so i'm just gonna move that like right there but as far as cleric goes they're way different they don't play exactly the same they're, they're the musicians they're the dancers they are the the actors um and typically focus more on support roles not um a lot of the spells don't focus on damage but they do have some really good damaging uh spells um they can create like like little houses like a tiny hut for you to like relax in for the rest of the party which they'll they'll love um they they talk shit essentially <laughs> um they can talk smack 
Um, this is a great character to a great class to like if you're kind of shy because it kind of gets you more involved with the with the game because they're focused more on charisma more charismatic type of player and sometimes you're gonna have the best skills for talking in the game so it might encourage you to do so but um but essentially yeah so that's bard um you got bard of uh creation eloquence glamour lore so bard's all about writing down the lore think of the the bard from uh, the witcher right he's always telling stories that's more little more the lore guys spirits which communicate with some spirits uh swords they can attack valor and whatnot but yeah so i'll say they fall into here you still got to deal with your spell casting, but over, overall, uh, the, the biggest time consumption would be just going through those spells. Um, oh, and they have a lot of great things to support the party. Druid, we're almost done here, which is good. There's Druid. So Druid, their magic is a little bit more based on nature. Um, they can like create like a fog cloud where you can't see through it, like create thunderstorms, snow, um, at later levels and essentially uh, be one with, with nature and they can transform themselves into animals. There's certain classes, subclasses, uh, circle of the moon druid where you can become like get really good at transform into animals so that's something you want to do but overall they have some some offensive spells right that do, does damage but they're a little bit more on support and you know that you can like change the earth underneath your enemies to make sure that they don't get to you as an example um they can heal right if you want to become there's some subclasses that allow you to heal really well with them um talk about subclasses that's why i brought brought these up so you can see them so there's uh druid of the dreams the moon that's the one that lets you transform the better into animals uh the stars so your power comes from the stars right wildfire so it comes from fire spores like this from mushrooms you kind of infect um i, I believe essentially you kind of have like you kind of have like your own like spore army kind of like a necromancer but um i gotta read i gotta read that one again it's been a while again but there are sp full spellcaster everything's pretty str uh, straight up but again when it comes to beginner and it comes to amount of time um i would say yeah you know I, I don't know if any of them <laughs> right now i'm thinking any of these fall under the dead like oh my god it takes so long but but it really depends on the person i think at the end of the day some things could be really straightforward for some people at, and some things can't it just takes a little longer and again i didn't pre-plan any of this i just thought i was like hey i'm gonna need four categories i guess i don't right I, i'm feeling right now that both of these are gonna go here because just in general but maybe for some of you bard might take you four hours or um the cleric might take you four hours right it just depends on what you're feeling and what, what what's what's appealing to you more overall once we kind of get here um the comp the complexity kind of changes I, I think at the end these might go here and at the end and let me explain why okay so let me start with the sorcerer uh essentially they're a magic user they can attack with magic and like their magic comes from them naturally you can have one with like that has like dragon like scale armor on like it, it comes out of them naturally you, some that are more more celestial you know cast fireballs cast like meteors and uh, be able to teleport the biggest thing with them currently is you don't have a lot of flexibility with your with your spells so when you level up you gotta pick all your spells and if you don't pick the right ones then it just like it's hard to change them because you only can change one at a time but there are some currently i know the aberrant mine and the colorwork soul doesn't give you that restriction and they're working on making every single class where you can just change your, your spells every single day it allows you to have that flexibility in your in your spell choices but overall a great place just like a, a wizard except you don't have to worry about your book um where it has all your spells but you're contained to your spell list which is smaller um than a than a wizard and when it comes to the wizard they they have access to pretty much all the spells in the game but you need that spell book essentially like right here um you need to write them down during the game and there's a lot of spells to choose from i think the overall the suckiest thing uh, that, that dungeon dragon creators are working on right now is making sure that the name of the spell actually represents what the spell does kind of an example here say there there's a spell called sleep and you can put your enemies to sleep but but they have some spells where they would be called something so let's just take an example sleep and but it doesn't make the the enemy asleep that'd be really weird right and they have a lot of the spells like that so that's why when it comes to reading any spell cast, it just takes a little more time as well um but anyways that's kind of my list here try to do that kind of quickly here and overall, I would say this is kind of where it lands as far as how much time you're going to be spending with your class, depending on what you pick for your character.